Chapter 23, Circulation. In order to maintain life, an animal has to acquire nutrients, exchange gases, specifically CO2 and oxygen, and also dispose of waste products. In most animals, the circulatory system will facilitate all three of those exchanges. An internal transport system must bring resources close enough to the cells so that they are able to diffuse into the cells to be effective. So remember that diffusion means moving from a high to a low concentration. So if we bring oxygen in, to the blood out to the cells, we hope that that oxygen will diffuse into the cells, nourishing them and oxygenating them so that they can perform their functions. The vertebrate circulatory system is often called a cardiovascular system with three main types of vessels. So we have arteries, and we can remember arteries by remembering arteries carry away. Artery starts with A, away starts with A. So arteries carry blood away from the heart, out to the body, organs, and tissues. Veins will return blood to the heart. Capillaries will bring the blood between the arteries and veins within each tissue. This is also where diffusion is going to happen in those thin walled capillaries. Land vertebrates have a double circulation, and this is where blood is pumped a second time after it loses pressure in the lungs. There's a pulmonary circuit, which carries blood between the heart and the gas exchange surface in the lungs. So pulmonary, that word means lungs. So this is a circuit that carries blood to the lungs, which is a pretty close trip, pretty pretty close by the heart. And then the systemic or system circuit is much longer. It's going to carry blood between the heart and the entire rest of the body. In all birds and mammals, the heart has four chambers. There are two atria and two ventricles. So here's a generalized heart right here in the middle. And then we have a representation of the pulmonary circuit, which is the circuit that goes to and from the lungs. And then we have the systemic circuit or system circuit that goes to the body and back to the heart. Okay, now the right side of the heart is primarily going to be handling only oxygen poor blood. So low oxygen, which is represented by this blue coloration, the right side of the heart, handling oxygen poor blood. And the left side of the heart is going to receive and pump only oxygen rich blood, which is demonstrated by this bright red coloration. So also to point out in the very basic anatomy of the heart, in mammals we have four chambers, also in birds. We have the two atria at the top. So atria is plural for atrium, two atria. And then we have the two ventricles down at the bottom. So looking specifically at the human cardiovascular system and heart, we're gonna throw in the lungs here as well. And this is, it, it looks a little complicated, but since this isn't an anatomy course, we don't have to know all of these details. What's important for us to understand is again that the right side of the heart is carrying deoxygenated blood. Um, and you can see here that it's going to be taking deoxygenated blood to the lungs. And so we can see these arrows going to the lungs. And what do we do in the lungs? We breathe in oxygen. So as we breathe in oxygen, that blood will become oxygenated, which shows here that it is now red. The left side of the heart will then pump that oxygenated blood out to the body, delivering oxygen and nutrients 
both to the upper and the lower body until it gives out most of the oxygen and then becomes deoxygenated where it then must return back to the right side of the heart. Your heart is about the size of a clenched fist. It's enclosed in a little sac just under the sternum or breastbone and is formed mostly of cardiac muscle tissue. So when you do as a dissection of the chest or thoracic cavity and we open up the rib cage, we can see the lungs and then there is a sac just under the sternum or breastbone where the heart lives inside of that little sac. The sac is for protection. The heart is made up of cardiac muscle tissue, which is an involuntary tissue. The heart separately but simultaneously pumps oxygen poor blood to the lungs, as we just discussed, and oxygen rich blood to the body. One way valves will keep the blood flowing in one direction through the heart so we don't have backtracking. So Final review of this, the right side of the heart receives deoxygenated blood, which it then sends out to the lungs so that it can become oxygenated. It then returns from the lungs into the left side of the heart, which it is then pumped out to the body, upper body and also lower body. Cardiac output is the volume of blood that you pump out of each ventricle per minute. And your heart rate is the number of heartbeats per minute, also known as the pulse. The SA node or sinoatrial node is also known as the heart's pacemaker. It's going to generate electrical impulses in the atria and sets the tone or the rate of your heartbeats or contractions. A heart attack is when we have damage or death of cardiac muscle tissue and is typically going to result from a blocked coronary artery. So in this image, we can see these small vessels that are actually feeding the heart tissue, making sure that it gets oxygen and nutrients. If there is a blockage in one of these arteries, it will cut off the cardiac tissue from oxygen and nutrients, which causes it to undergo death. And so we have dead muscle tissue here, and depending on how bad that damage is, is obviously going to depend on how severe the heart attack was and the future prognosis. So we mentioned arteries that carry blood away and we mentioned veins that carry blood too. Capillaries have very thin walls consisting of only a single layer of epithelial cells. They are narrow, about as wide as only one red blood cell. And their job is to exchange gas and fluid with the interstitial fluid. And interstitial fluid is the tissue fluid, so the fluid surrounding the cells and bathing the tissues. So here's an image of an actual capillary, and you can see the individual red blood cells, and you can see they are literally as wide as the capillary. Arteries and veins are lined by a single layer of epithelial cells, but they also have elastic fibers in an outer connective tissue layer that's going to allow these vessels to stretch and recoil after they stretch. Arteries have a thick layer of smooth muscle that can constrict and reduce blood flow, and veins have one way valves that will restrict backward flow of blood. So here's an image of the three vessels. Over on the left we have the artery which is bright red in this image. We've got some connective tissue to make the wall of the artery tough, smooth muscle, and epithelial tissue which is protective that lines the artery. 
The artery then branches and connects to a capillary bed. And the capillary, remember, is only one cell layer thick, very fine wall vessel. This is where we'll have gas exchange and nutrient exchange. And then the vein also has connective tissue and smooth muscle. But what's different about it is it has valves in it. And this will continue to push blood upward against gravity, like if you're talking about in the legs, and these valves will prevent backflow of blood based on gravity. Blood consists of several types of cells that are suspended in a liquid called plasma. So plasma is the fluid part of blood and is about 90% water. Floating in that plasma, which is sort of a yellowish clear color, we have three primary uh, groups of cells that we're going to find suspended in that plasma. So we've got red blood cells, white blood cells, and then we've got platelets, which are really more like cell fragments. So let's start with the two legitimate cells. We have red blood cells, also known as erythrocytes. They are what gives blood its red color. They carry oxygen on the protein hemoglobin to be delivered to the body. White blood cells, or leukocytes, will function inside and outside the circulatory system to fight infection. There are some white blood cells called monocytes and neutrophils that are what is known as phagocytic. Phagocytic cells will basically engulf or eat bacteria and debris or trash from our own dead cells. Also suspended in the plasma are platelets, which are cell fragments that help us with the process of blood clotting. So here's an image of red blood cells or erythrocytes. And that concludes a very basic overview of the circulatory system.